Here's the latest target for retribution by the foaming elites, patriotic Americans. This Democrat says we must be suspicious of the National Guard, you know, because they're dudes and stuff. The Guard is 90 some odd percent, I believe, male. Um, only about 20 percent of white males voted for Biden. They're probably not more than 25 percent of the people that are there protecting us who voted for Biden. The other 75 percent are in the class that would be uh, the, the large class of folks who might want to uh, uh, do something. Probably racist. So where might this political vetting of the military lead? Will Republicans be court-martialed? Or will Biden build an army within an army? Isn't this what they expected from Trump? Meanwhile, there's this widespread video meant to instigate reprisals against, yes, Trump's secret army. In the years ahead, Trump will lead his army of domestic terrorists. He will encourage and incite violence. He will play the role of arsonist and fireman. He will start a civil war and then say things were more peaceful when he was president. We have to fight back. He's going to be out of office. They can't let him go. So won't that video lead to more violence, targeting Trumpers? But hey, I'm not going to blame a video for violence. Only the Democrats do that. Remember, the same people blaming you for the Capitol violence are the same people who blamed you for the summer's violence and are the same people who blamed Benghazi on a video. Yeah, laugh. It's funny. But it's happening again, the targeting of dissent by labeling words as crimes so they can be silenced. But Americans get it. Elite approved violence never matters. The summer's violence, it was nothing. But your vote, well, that makes you the Klan. Democratic cities are in chaos right now. Is this what you want from Joe Biden? And they're going to take your country away and they're taking down the statues. I'm never on the side of the Klan. I am never principal people, conservative or liberal, never on the Klan side. Principal people, conservative or liberal, never on the Nazi side. Principal people who are conservative or liberal, never on the side that treats their, their fellow Americans as less than, that says that your fellow Americans should not exist. Judging everybody by their worst element. Now, when you bring up this contrast, you get accused of whataboutism. But that's all history is, one long whataboutism, in which the idiots of today are often idiots of the past, hence the need to hide behind feeble dismissals. But we aren't comparing actions, just the response to said actions, which is the only way to keep people accountable. Could the media's defense of mob action allow for more in the future as they come for you? Right now, we have a salivating lynch mob formed from the press, academia, big tech, the DC power structure, linking commentary to crime in order to drive censorship, harassment, and boycotts. Ultimately, arrests may come. With 74 million domestic terrorists, we better get started. All right, I want to go to Dana Bash first. Uh, it's kind of weird uh, how the Democrats, uh, Ms. Bash, are scared of their own troops. I mean, what does that say? Well, I think that a couple things. I was listening to this podcast where they said that each group, Republicans, Democrats, conservatives, liberals, think that they are losing in the battle. OK, so like Democrats, even though they now have the, both the House and the Senate and the White House, they still think that they are losing the battle. Republicans think that they have lost the battle. But just a couple things to remind. This is a list, Jesse. Here's a list for you. Um, Republicans held the Democrats to the narrowest minority possible in the Senate. OK, we see that 50 50. That is the you can't get more narrow than that. Um, we have a majority of governor's mansions that are now Republican. A majority of state legislatures are Republicans. That means redistricting. And a 6-3 majority on the Supreme Court. And Republicans were said there to lose the House. They were going to lose more seats in the Senate. And they didn't do that. So I think that, you know, I think that when you have a fringe um, and criminals that did certain things, to suggest that that is broad brush and paints all 74 million people that voted for President Trump with the same brush, that obviously is not good yeah. and not true and not fair. Remember that the media spent a long time after the 2016 election going all around the country saying, who are these voters? Um, well, they're the same voters. Um, there were terrible people uh, that had horrible actions uh, at the Capitol, just up the street here. Um, that does not mean 74 million Americans are the same. Yeah, I think the two solutions to healing this country is assuming the best and the people you disagree with, not assuming the worst. And I think I forgot the right. second point. 
I think the second point was even better <laughs> than the first point, Jesse. <laughs> Well, first of all, thank you for your strong defense of whataboutism. <laughs> that definitely needed to be said. Um, but we, we, when you when you see twenty five thousand oh, National Guardsmen in Washington D.C., a lot of people feel that might just be a political show of force, especially when you hear the Department of Defense saying there is no intelligence to indicate that there is any threat at all, and there's not even going to be a crowd because of COVID tomorrow. And you're hearing reports that a lot of the guardsmen don't even have bullets in the chamber. They're just walking around unarmed. So I do believe you got to beef up security in the Capitol after the mob attack on the Capitol. I do agree with that. But it seems a little bit overkill. Are they doing that because they're paranoid or are they doing that to inflate the threat from innocent Trump supporters to justify mm. the crackdown? I don't know. The congressman should be ashamed of himself. To, to accuse the, um, the American National Guard of plotting an assassination attempt because they're white male, I, by the left standards, he should be canceled. And the fact that the CNN guy just stared there and blinked at him was atrocious. And to make matters worse, he even got the exit polls wrong. And that what's really makes me upset. <laughs> Biden won 40 percent of white male voters, not 20 percent. So this country has to stop acting like communist China, where we're going to persecute political dissidents because of what they tweet. I mean, that is more of a threat than a few crazy people storming the Capitol long term. Yeah, you know, uh, uh, Jesse, Juan, Jesse makes a good point, oddly, uh, that um, if you just if you were to apply Co Cohen's uh, ideas to like, let's say a different race, that the assumption that a certain group of people act a certain way he would be toast, but it's okay because they're just white males, and white males are evil, as you know, because you work with them, Juan. <laughs> well, thank you, thank you, thank you, Mr. What about? Uh, I, I would say that this is not what about here. I think that uh, Congressman Cohen's comments were way over the top. I don't think that you can make a judgment uh, about people's ability to do their job on the basis of their political beliefs. I just think that's wrong, and I think it invites the kind of thinking that Greg is uh, leading us to. But I will say this in all fairness, that just today in the news it says that 12 members of the National Guard were found to have ties to extremists and removed from the group here in Washington. So it's not to say that this is alarmism. It is to say that a small, very small number, given the high number of National Guard troops on the ground here in D.C., uh, we're found to have some extremist ties. And as you know, the Pentagon last week had to send out a war, uh, an alarm in the sense saying to all, everyone, you know what, we are here to defend the Constitution no matter what your political beliefs may be. And that's why I think today you had Mitch McConnell, the Senate Majority Leader, saying, yes, President Trump provoked that mob, and yes, other important, powerful people in Washington added to that. That was a mistake, and he acknowledged it. The, uh, Katie, uh, Juan just teed it up for you. These, uh, he, basically, they said you should defend the Constitution no matter what your political beliefs are, which is exactly why they shouldn't be <laughs> doing this to the National Guardsmen. Twelve of yeah. them. Extremist, home, extremist ties. What could that be? Well, the Pentagon, the Pentagon also clarified and said that not all of them had anything to do with the Capitol. In fact, only two of them did. And my big question is, how are they determining what extremism is? How, mm -hmm. What are they using as their their barometer for what counts as extremism? If you voted for Trump, as the Democrat Cohen said, or does it entail something else? What are they matching up against? And are we going to have the FBI, which has lost ton of trust with the American people in terms of their own political biases over the last six years doing this. But I just have to say, I know that I'm already on the list because I named my dog Gadsden after the American Revolution. And now they're trying to say that that's an extremist thing to do. So poor Gadsden. He's already on the list. He's going to get canceled, even though he's really cute. Yeah, the only list I'm on is the <laughs> Harry and David email list. You buy one thing from Harry and David, and all they do is send emails. I want them to stop sending me emails. I buy one flower food basket. That's all I want. 